Okay, the recording started. So just a little introduction right now to the podcast listeners. Um, if this is the first time you've tuned in to a forbidden authenticity within podcast, my name is Chase, Chase Gillis. And the the goal of this conversation with Paul and with any of the guests that I have on this show the primary goal is authentic conversation authentic com- authentic communication and between us just showing what that can look like as i feel that is the, the number one thing that is deprived from a person who stutters when when they're in the heat of it when they're when they feel trapped because of their stutter i feel authentic communication where they let down the filters and they just show their true selves i feel like that is the hardest thing so just demonstrating what that can look like is the number one goal and then the second goal the 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 secondary goal would be to share the i the ideas and the concepts from the guest speaker which i'm very excited to talk to as I've seen his TED talk. And just by the title of his TED talk, I I knew that I would want Paul on the podcast. So um, with that little introduction, uh, Paul, how are you doing today? Hey, look, I'm, I'm great. And, and thank you uh, for inviting me onto your um, podcast. And um, one of the things, and now you've explained, I was intrigued by the title. Mm. Um, uh, and, I, and I wondered what you'd you'd meant by the title and what was behind the title of the podcast. Now you've explained, explained it so well. Um, not only do I understand it, but I can relate to what you're saying as someone who has stuttered all my life. Um, trying to be you when you have this barrier in front of you. Literally, I describe it in the book that I've just written as all-consuming. Your mm. stutter, I'm not sure how you feel, but especially when I was younger, from the moment I woke up in the morning, my brain would click into, what did I say yesterday? Where did I get the block what did they think of me? Who am I going to speak to today? Am I going to get another block? Do I speak today? Do I not speak today? And um, so that I think that all-consuming feeling of having a stutter to do the most basic thing, which is to communicate, can act a, can be a barrier to authentic you. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And I I would love to dive into that right now. One thing that I do with all of my podcast podcast guests, which I forgot to do with the last one, um, is to start off, since the main primary goal is me and you having an authentic conversation, one thing that I feel, and this is the first time we've ever spoke, one mm-hmm. thing that really helps me to have an authentic communication when I first meet somebody is to be able to look them in the eyes and not say and not say a word for one minute for one for one for one minute. Hmm. So this is what I call uh eye gazing. And I've done this all a whole bunch. Would you be open to do one minute of, of eye gazing? Hmm. Okay. I'll start the timer here. And if you guys are listening on Spotify and not YouTube, where you do not have the video, you can just skip ahead one minute. So here we go.
Go. One minute. <laughs> the uh the 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 reason why I love that so much, the reason why that feels like it heals some type of mm, how do I word that? I feel like when I look at someone for the first time and I've never spoke to them before, or when I go to speak to them, there's just by default, there's a lot of different faces that I try to have of the person who, who seems cool and the person who can be smooth and the Mm. person who the, like trying to be the person that they like. And in that one minute, just to be like, anytime I feel like my cheeks rise of like trying to please the person or I feel tension in my face just to relax that and to prove to my brain it's safe right now. It's safe. And then as a result of that, I feel I'm able to much better express my true thoughts. I, 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 I I definitely understand that. I think having a stutter you're trying so hard to talk at times in order to be it is better not to talk Mm. but because you want to whether it's you're meeting new people or you want to fit in or you you've got a point to say all that energy and it's exhausting right i'm not sure how you find having a stutter i'm not i'm a lot better now because i'm i'm a lot older than you so i've learned you learn all these techniques, but even the techniques take energy. Um, but I I find the, even the process of communicating in, in meetings um, is exhausting. And that in itself, does that, you know, ask, I'm asking myself on this podcast, does that then sometimes take away the authentic you? Mm. Because you're trying too hard. And if if you were just being and very comfortable in your own skin, you wouldn't be trying too hard to speak. But the fact that we find it so hard to speak, in a way, I've always found it much harder to be comfortable in my own skin because I'm always trying. Yeah. That makes sense. It's like, uh, um, how can I be comfortable in my own skin if I'm trying all the time to speak? If I was comfortable in my own skin, maybe I wouldn't need to speak. <laughs> it's it's kind of how rational mm. it's myself. Yeah, I I one hundred percent feel that it's it's all in the trying. Like yes, it's yeah. I I have a lot to say about that. But before we hop into that, and before we hop into the TED talk and what brought me here, and the 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 book that you're releasing, uh, was it November twenty sixth? Yeah, twenty seventh for the Kindle, and twenty eighth for the um, for the softback. And I'm going to there will be a there, there will be a there will be a time on the twenty seventh where people will be able to buy it for ninety nine pence or ninety nine cents. Um, so I will so I'll share that with everybody so they can you know go and get it for like a really good price, uh, not, not pay a lot of money. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. That is great to, that's great to know. So before we hop into all of that, Mm. let's just, and I mean, this, this is a question that people ask on podcasts of like, tell me about yourself. And I, I don't really like it. It's not really a fun question to answer Mm. as like, I'm sure we've tried to answer it so many times. We're like, how do we sum up ourselves it's an it's an impossible question but i've if we're going to dive into what we're going to dive into i feel it's a a necessary question just to ask like what do you feel are the biggest high what do you feel the biggest high the biggest highlights in your in your life that have shaped you into the person you are right now um, so I can go back to when I was 17 years of age. That I think that was the first, the first one. Um, so from the age of uh, 10, te- roughly 10, my, my sort of parents um, tried everything they could to fix me and my stutter. 
you know, so I went to the National Health Service in the UK. I went to speech therapy. Um, I saw psychologists, psychiatrists. Um, that I even went to see acupuncturists and hypnotherapists. And it was a constant, um, surely we can fix this thing called the stutter. Mm-hmm. Um, and all the questions I was being asked at the time was, you know, as I talk about in the TED talk, it was very much, you know, why do you do this? What's causing this problem? So one of the first things that shaped my life, it's quite emotional for me to talk about it now, actually, um, because it was such a, an important point. At 17 years of age, I just started work as an apprentice and I was I was going to hypnotherapy um, and I came out, I came out of the session and I thought, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of people asking me what is wrong with me and how they can help fix me. And I don't, I, I, I stutter, so what? I'm going to find a way of living with my stutter and finding a way that's not going to hold me back because I'm sick of all, I'm sick of all the attention of, 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 uh, self-doubt self-questioning um and don't get me wrong I still you know but we all have have that it's what's me it was it what keeps us all humble but that point that absolute point in my life was the first moment that I took a, a stand really for me um that I wouldn't be defined by the way that I spoke yes I I I I I love that because I remember having heard so many stories of people who stutter when they're younger not being held back from their from their stutter at all like their mm. stutter they would stutter their head off mm. and they they wouldn't view it as a problem yes it it wouldn't hold them back but the moment it was classified as a problem correct by somebody else like this is something you need to fix yes we we create this image that there's a version of us that is on unex- that is on unex- that is unacceptable a version yeah. of us that is not that is not that is not that is not lovable correct that is that is not able to be respected that needs that needs to change Mm. and that like coming from that point of view where we have to change this in order to be loved we have to change this in order to be accepted and to be respected Mm. like talk about the talk about the tent talk about the tension in your body when you're about to stutter and you you have that story in the back of your mind especially as a child it it really ingrains a very na- a very na- a very negative relationship with it and i personally feel that like so much of the journey is about unlearning why it's such a bad thing i i, I agree I, and i think it's the often it's the simplest things that causes the greatest problem so i so i remember and i so I remember um, more so when I was in my early 20s. So I, 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 did, I did education for a long time. So I, so I was an apprentice and I was doing what they call a high national diploma in the UK in electronics and communications. So I went, so I went to college on day release. I dreaded the first day of college because what do they do on the first day of college? They ask the names of the people in the class. What's your name and which organization is it you work for? So I used to, you know, pe- people who don't stutter do not think of, and why should they, you know, walking into the classroom thinking, where should I sit? What's going to give me the best vantage point so I know when the lecture is going to get to me? Can I get the guy next to me to say my name for me? Get stuff, say your own name. Can I do breathing exercises? Can I relax? Can I shorten my name? Can I, can I, can I? What can I do? And it's not, it was not only about what can I do to 
um, help myself, it's to prevent what I felt was embarrassment for everybody else. So, because you know what happens when you start, especially when you get a block, right? A bad block. And you get a bad block. It's like it goes on forever, right? And I don't I don't know about you, Chase, but I used, I had this weird thing where I remember one lesson, a guy called Dr. Kit Latham, who was our technology um, lecturer, and he got to me, and I just couldn't say my name. I got such a bad block. And in my block, it's like I've got two, 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 two of me. I can say in the middle of a block, hold on, I just can't say my name. But then I go back into my block. So I can pop out my block and say something and then get stuck back in my name. So it's like, I'm, and people look at you they're like, who is this weird guy? <laughs> yeah. He's saying he can't say his name, but he's just said he can't say his name. So why can't he say his name? And that tension, that tension of all of that building up to that moment. Uh, I, I read a quote. It was something like, and I'll get the quote wrong, but it's something like, um, the biggest regret people have when they stutter is after the fact. Mm. Because then you're constantly then going back over what's just happened in your head. And that can be all consuming. So I think there's an, there's an awful lot going on when you stutter in something as simple as a class registration. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And <laughs> to, I, first of all, I love the, the lightheartedness and the, and the humor that you're able to have with talking about the stutter now, as I feel that's something that def that definitely comes with getting very comfortable with it. Yes. Um. Some something I'd, I'd like to add to the humor of it all is like, if if we get caught on her name or if we get caught on the word stutter, like stutter, I stutter on the word stutter. Yes. But except when I explain that I stutter on the word stutter, like I can say the word stutter now, fine. Yes. Yes. But it's the moment, it's the first time where I, I, I know the words coming. Yes. And then I stutter on the word stutter, but now I could say stutter, no problem. I, I know. And it's just such an interesting thing, how, how all of that works. And it's the same thing with the name thing. Like if, if you don't feel like, if you're not and if you're not anticipating it, mm. you can just say it. Like for most most of the time, you you can say it, but the moment you're like, I have to say my name, and then you have that time to think about it. That's when it like, it's very interesting how how that works. So look, I think I think also now, and I I think what is really important for people who stutter is I spend over 40 years of my life, no longer, nearly 50 years of my life, believing there was a psychological problem with me, right? Because I was told in my early years there was something wrong with me from a psychological perspective. The advance in medicine now and the research says it's not psychological, it's neurological. It's hardwiring in your brain. Now, that and this sounds really this sounds like a really simple thing to say. Therefore, it is not your fault. Mm. I believed for most of my life it was my fault. There was something psychologically wrong with me, and and that in and of itself caused the pressure of there is something wrong with me. Now, I'm not saying it. Maybe it's not any easier for people who stutter who now understand it's 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 you know it's neurological. But I, it definitely felt worse when I felt it was psychological. Mm -hmm. Because if you say it's psychological, you see, there's an onus put back on you that somehow you can solve your problem. But if it's neurological, it's what it's actually wiring in your brain. You can't solve that problem because it's mm -hmm. the way you're wired. So therefore, mm -hmm. let's change the way we frame the way we speak. It's just the way we speak. It's just the wiring's a bit messed up in your brain right for some whatever whatever reason 
And that's not your fault. You just happen to stutter. So how how do we then deal with the fact we stutter? Mm-hmm. And it's a slightly different problem. Does that make sense? It's it's a where if you where if you if you believe for whatever reason it's psychological, then there's something. As my teacher told me when I was ten, there's something wrong inside my head. Well, yeah, there was. It's wiring. It's not. It's not the way I think. It's not. It's not something I'm doing wrong to myself. It's not some nervous disposition. Um, it's not anxiety. It's just I stutter. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. As I I feel like I agree with that on some part, and then on another part, I um. like how how i view it is like the the root and the condition or like the cause of the stutter is like yes there there is a a difference in the brain and diff- and a difference in what lights up when you talk yes. and and all of that but i feel there is psychological factors at play that really determine how much you stutter and also mm. um how you're able to cope with that um so i i would ask do you feel like even, even though the root of it is a neuro is a neurological problem do you feel like there is things you can do to Im- to improve the way that you express yourself. And I wouldn't even say to reduce this stutter as I feel like when that's the goal to reduce the stutter, you will just get in your head more. But do you feel there's a, a way to improve how you express yourself that as a byproduct does re- does re- does reduce the stutter? Yes. So, so um what one of the, one, one of the other decisions sorry, sorry let me let me let me come, I'll, I'll explain that bit so one of the decisions that I took at 17 what were to not let my stuff hold me back was then to be the best I could be at whatever I was doing at the time so um and I would just stutter but I was getting good at something else. I was getting good at the job that I was doing. And I was trying to find a job that I loved because I'd read in all these books which said, if you find a job that you love, you'll be great at it and you'll enjoy doing it. So what I came to understand, but again, it was only much later on in my life, I'm going through the process of writing the book, which was very cathartic um, and very emotional. And back to your authentic word, this is why I love your word authentic, right? I love, I love, I love that word so much. And here's the thing. When you're younger, you believe your stutter is a huge, huge part of you because it's, it's all consuming, as I was saying before. My revolution, the argument, the idea is your stutter is only a part of you. So if you focused on all the other parts, imagine it's a dartboard, right? If if you could believe that your stutter was just number one on the dartboard, you've got 19 more bits to go at, right? So can you get good at 19 other things? It might not be 19, it might be five, right? It might be four, but your stutter then becomes the one part and you're then developing yourself in all other sorts of ways, whether it's getting fit, playing a musical instrument, being good at sport, being good at whatever job you ch- choose to do, an architect, an accountant, a doctor, a lawyer, a plumber, an electrician. So if you can become confident in what you can do, then the impact of your speech on authentic you becomes less because you've developed all the other parts of you, mm. right? So what I found, and, and and as we as you can tell, I still stutter today. And yesterday, I had a really bad day yesterday, right? So good job we didn't do this conversation yesterday. But what I found was that 
as my confidence grew in what I was doing, the psychological impact, which you described before, became less, i.e. the way that it impacts me. So your point was right before in that if you stutter, it can have a psychological impact on you because it's causing you to doubt yourself. You said maybe not feel loved, not feel relevant, not feel important, not feel you know good enough. But if you can develop these other parts of you that you know you are good enough, you know that you've got somebody who loves you despite the fact you stutter, you know that you're achieving things you want to achieve in your life, your ability to deal psychologically with the conversations in your own head is, yeah, I do stutter. And yeah, every now and again, it causes me real issues and it can make me feel upset. But you know what? 80% 80% of the time, I'm kind of good with it. Yes. That part of your TED talk was a part where I'm like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's the part that I'm like, like, this is, this, this is it. Because that's exactly what I found for myself right. as well is, um, a slightly different than what you said, but still on the same, same what what you're saying is like, and maybe you said this in the TED talk too, but it's like when you have nothing else going, when you have no other goal in your life, or no other thing that you're working on, no other thing you're dev, you're dev, you're develop, you're developing, no other goal your stutter becomes like the biggest thing in your life. Absolutely. It's the biggest thing in your life. And the moment where you have a bigger goal, like the, 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 the moment where you feel like you have a purpose or the moment where you are clear and where you want to go Mm. and achieving this means more to you than avoiding the stutter absolutely your stutter your your stutter you can just put it in your pocket it becomes a small thing that just feels absolutely. like a part a part of you but not your whole life exactly and that and that's why i called it a revolution right i called it a revolution because if you say to somebody and i did ask this question of many people and i've written the book if you wanted to help someone about a stutter what would you do and they said oh help them fix the speech and i went nah right no because the moment you start to focus on becoming more fluent, you said it before, all of the attention is on. And if I use it from a, um, let, let me use it in a negative context, but I'll, I'll, I will change it is you focus on something you're struggling to do. So why don't you focus on something you don't struggle to do? Why don't you focus on something that liberates you? Right. And then what you'll find is hopefully is that the thing that you used to struggle with the most now is not as important and therefore you find it easier to speak. But let me give you the paradox. And the, the, the parad- and this is what really taught me some lessons. So when I was going through my treatments in the NHS, everyone was always looking for the cause. And you mentioned this before. Are and the times... S- s- so, sorry to interrupt, oh, but the, the, the NHS... That's a thing in the UK. Oh yeah, so it's the National Health Service. So the so it's the so it's the so it's where you go uh, to. Uh, for any me- any medical treatments, so you go to hospital mm. or you go to speech therapy. Um, I go to the doctors that that's all that's that's all part of the national health service in the UK yeah yeah so that's that's what that is and that's where I spent a lot of my time in my in my in in my youth and that's and and that's where the medical profession was trying to help me but the um the psychological thing is very interesting so in 2008 2009 sorry March 2009 I gave a speech to 1,100 people um, from 40 nationalities, right, in Dubai, 
just before the launch of the Dubai Metro, because I was working on that, 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 that project then. And I gave a speech, and I was told the speech was a brilliant speech. I walked off the stage. I walked out of the hotel, got in a taxi. I couldn't explain and say the name of the hotel to the taxi driver. Mm. So I think, so you're right before, certain situations can invoke your speech being worse but it's not always what you think it's going to be or what other other people think it's going to be. Because often when I'm relaxed and I'm not controlling the way I speak, I stutter. Whereas, whereas the medical profession thought, no, it's when you're put in stressful situations. One of the worst things I do with my, my wife still can't understand this today. When we go out and have a meal, I cannot ask for things off the menu. She's like, you're with me. What? You're in a nice restaurant. You haven't. So, you know, so why? So I think the psychological thing, the psychological thing is, is always worth understanding about yourself because we're all going to be different. We're all going to be what triggers us to stutter will be different for all of us. And I think the medical profession wants to box you. It wants to say, well, of course, it must be this situation that makes you stutter. No, no, because we're all unique. Right. And our authentic self, once we understand our authentic selves, as you described before, what triggers you to stutter maybe for different reasons for all of us? Mm. Because we're not the same because we're we're people. We're, we're, you know, back to we have a stutter, but the rest of us is is unique, whereas unique Mm. is everybody else. Yes, I I I I agree with with um how different things trigger the stutter. Yeah. Um I would also like to add possibly a different perspective on mm-hmm. on um what I what what at least I feel is the commonality with people who stutter and when they stutter the most Mm. as i've spent yeah not as much time as you with this with this stutter but i've spent quite a bit of time trying to discover this and what i've come up with is it's it's in the it's it's in the environment, and you can disagree with this. If if you disagree with this, it'd be a great conversation. Um, yes. It's it's in the environments that I feel where we feel emotionally unsafe. So mm-hmm. it's not physically unsafe. It can be physically unsafe if it means that stuttering. Mm, I wouldn't even say that. To to go back to your your talk in front of eleven hundred people. Hmm. and then going to the taxi driver what came to my mind is like with your speech what what i feel would make you feel emotionally safe is one having stat one having stat having stat having status Hmm. in that environment as i feel when when we have an elevated status or when our status is secure mm. um and we speak it comes out we feel a lot more safe e- emotionally versus trying to talk to a cop or trying to talk to someone who we feel has a higher status than us mm. so if we're giving us a, a speech i feel that that we feel we have some type of st- status in that and then also um when we have the when we have the mic it feels like we have no time pressure of course there's like there 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 is a time pressure you have to finish within 20 minutes or in your ted talk within 16 minutes or whatever but no one can interrupt us no one can barge in and be like you're taking too long. Of course, if you mm. go over time, but in that moment, in that 15 minutes, mm. you can do whatever. You can pause, 
Mm-hmm. It won't it won't be seen as weird. It won't cast it won't cast judgment. Like why is this person pausing during his speech? Like that's a common thing, mm-hmm. and that makes us feel like emotionally we have the availability to just just do whatever we want to do. Versus, I feel going to a taxi driver where there is no status there. It's like he he doesn't know you just gave a speech. You're just mm. an average person in the day. Mm, sure. And it's 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 weird if if he's like it's weird if if he's yeah. like where do you want to go and you pause for ten seconds before answering like that <laughs> e <laughs> that emotionally it gives a different response to you that feels like it's a unsafe to take your time um that's what came to my mind i'm wondering what what came up for you when i when i spoke with that so so look i i'm really i'm really curious it's good to have the conversation i i definitely think that emotional safety is a factor in how we react to our stutter i think for me in that situation i would offer a different perspective um and i've not thought about this since the event actually so um other than to write about it because i I always remember it being a quite an important moment really for me is that when i go on stage i am in a state so i know i have to perform right so I go on and I, I'm, I've conditioned myself. I've rehearsed what I'm going to say. And um, it, is, it, is a, it, is a, it is a performance. And I, I want to nail the performance. I want to be good at the performance. When I get into the taxi, I'm not in a state. And this, I think what this links back to is your authentic point right at the start of the podcast. You see, maybe in the taxi, I'm authentic me. Mm. And maybe on stage, I'm authentic me performing, but I'm not I'm not authentic me relaxed. Mm. And now what, what I'm asking myself as I'm saying this to you is, may, maybe authentic me, maybe at some level a bit anxious when I get in the taxi, then I'm going to have to ask him, I'm going to have to describe where my hotel is because I know it's going to be an issue saying it and therefore saying it is an issue because that's how your brain works. Right. So, so uh, yes, that, I think that would be the difference. I, I'm not controlling my state in the mm. taxi. Um. So, but I definitely think there's a, a point which is right about what you're saying in terms of emotional safety. May, maybe I've just let go um of my state well i have i've let go of my state from being on stage to get into the taxi because i'm now just want to get back to my hotel you know Mm. yeah interesting yeah it what you just said there reminds me of what one speech language pathologist and i would say 95 percent of the speech language pathologists i wouldn't talk about i I'm, i'm i'm not like super fond of the treat the treat the treatments and the treatment goals and all of Mm. that but one person he's not alive anymore but he wrote a book on star on star on on stuttering and he gave his name is uh dr joe dr joseph dr joseph sheehan and in his book called stuttering research and therapy i believe okay he he gave this a example of this severe person who stutters when this person started to act start start started to um, become an actor in the roles that he played Mm. he never stuttered yeah he never stuttered in the roles that he played going from a severe stutterer to just change yeah. just to change your role mm-hmm. to change your identity in that role but the moment the acting school that he went to 
switch to a different type of act, switch to a different type of acting where I forget, I forget exactly what it was, but the type of uh, the type of uh, the type of acting was one where you had to em, you had to embody a lot more of yourself. Yes, it's it's a I type of acting versus yeah. this is a role that I'm playing. Yes. He again started to stutter a lot more because yeah. there was the identification that this is me. That's right, and it's 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 crazy. It goes to what you're saying right there. Is mm. like. When you're on stage, it feels like, yeah, it's still you, but there's, there's, there, there, there is that different state. There is that different role versus when you're in taxi and it's I, I am the person who stutters. And as a result, that, that comes out. Yeah. Well, that love that, and that resonates because if you think about Samuel L. Jackson, and Emily Blunt, Nicole um, Idman, all of them have a butter, but they all act brilliantly. You know, so in the roles um, of acting, you would never know, would you? You, you, and that's one of the things I said uh, in the TED talk. You don't, you don't recognize them because of the way they speak. In terms of having a stutter, you recognize them because they're brilliant actors. Mm. Joe Biden's the same, you know, um, and so that I think that really does reinforce your, you know, your sort of point. I, I suppose that, and this is a this is a delicate point, in that this podcast is about being authentic, and I wonder if so. For example, my and my 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 mom and dad used to say this this to me because I was in a I was in a um, a production at, at school when I was 16 and I had the lead role and, and, and for four nights and didn't stutter once. And they said, well, why don't you just put on a voice? Mm-hmm. But even at 16, I went, yeah, but that's not authentic me. I didn't use the word authentic because I didn't know, <laughs> didn't know the word there. But, um, but that didn't feel right to wear or to pretend a voice that wasn't my voice, even though the prize was that if I put on a voice, I wouldn't... I wanted more to be me than to put on a voice and speak without a... If that makes sense. Mm. Yes. The price was too high. The price of giving me away to a voice that wasn't mine was too high. Why would I want to do that? But for some people... That might that might be okay for them. That is okay for them, but for me, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. I feel the exact same way as when I first started to look up like how to overcome stuttering on YouTube and stuff like that. I yeah. one of the first vi- one of the first videos I watched was this dude saying that you never stutter when you sing. So when you speak kind of do it in a rhythm way and kind of sing your words yeah. and i was like yeah that's gonna work um <laughs> but i think deep deep down i knew that if i had to systematize or use some type of crafted way to speak in order to speak I would never, I feel like I intuitively knew this. I would never just truly be able to just relax and not think so much and just be. And I, I think intuitively also, I, I knew that only the, the true love and the true egg and the true acceptance of what I was after cannot be felt if I was playing a character. Like if I'm acting on a stage and I don't stutter one time, because I'm acting, I in that in in that in that performance, I, I don't think I would be able to truly feel the the depths of what be a uh, what be a uh, what belonging feels like, a uh, what love feels like. Yes. Because it's an act. And I feel like 
what we're truly after is that acceptance, is that love, is that belonging. And I feel like into I feel intuitively I I knew in order to in order to achieve that, I have to learn to just be myself and learn to not care so much when I stutter. Exactly. And we've got loads of role models like so um, Kendrick Lamar, Ed Sheeran, people who have used music to um, express themselves when they couldn't find the words because they stuttered. And then when they became really good at what they did in music, back to my point before about the stuttering then diminished because they're now so good at something else that that's taken over. You know what I mean? So, and for some people that does happen, but for people like me, that's, that's not happened. But I think to your point, I now don't care as much about that because I, 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 I live with the stutter as being part of me, not all of me. Yes. So, if I, you know, so, if, so, so um, let me give you an example. So I had a, I had a pretty senior, a, global role in in the corporation i used to work for and what i learned in the end was it was if i was given a speech i would start my speech with um health and safety moments and i'd say so i'd never say my name right i'd say hi, hi um, i'm gonna start this presentation with a health and safety moments um, i have a stutter the reason i'm telling you that is because i sometimes get blocked and last week, I got a block. Two blokes wrestled me off the stage. They tried to give me mouth-to-mouth resuscitation and CPR. We ended up in a fight, right? And then, and, and I made that into a joke. Now, I've told that story a thousand times in a thousand presentations from being about 40. Because what that allows me to do, it signals to the audience that I've got a stutter. <laughs> It signals to the audience I might get blocked. And I've then given myself, um, uh, what's the right word? I've given myself, I, I, I have in, I've told them this might happen. And that takes the pressure off me because I've told them it might happen, right? And I've told it with humor. So then if it does happen, I just crack on through it. Yeah. Right. Rather than worrying about because what I used to do is go, if I get halfway through and I've not stuttered, that'll be great. And if I get halfway through, I'm sure I can get the whole way through. <laughs> but it never happened. I always got I always got stuck at the start. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just I found a way of taking the pressure off. Um and then if it did stutter, it didn't matter to anybody. Yes. I think that's that's like one of the most important things that someone who is shameful of it and tries to hide from it from the stutter can a practice that they can do is is to share that as yeah it's just re it removes an additional mask of thinking yes. of i i need to be this certain way i need to achieve this outcome of fluency and that extra pressure like you said just gets released and i feel once we release the added pressures we put on ourselves we um we are a lot more natural and free um yeah so going to your book now yeah i actually i i wrote down something here be before I, I talk about your book, I just want to ask you a pers a personal question. And I see that when you stutter, the the vibe that you have before you stutter and the vibe that you have after the stutter. So your en so your en so your energy and how how I think that you feel, it looks the same. Yes. It's like I'm talking now, I stutter, and I continue feeling and expressing and having the same vibe as I did before the stutter. I think that's extremely rare. And I oh. think a lot I, I I think a lot of people who stutter, at least at the be at, at least at the beginning, they're feeling good and they're expressing, and then they get caught in a block. 
and then they beat themselves up and then they have all these self doubts and then they think the other person thinks they're a loser. Yes. And then after that block, they're like drained and they're exhausted and they're mentally fatigued. And the version they are after the stutter is just a lot lower. Mm. So my personal question to you would be like, is that something that took practice or what would you say has all has all has allowed you to remain the same person um regardless if you stutter or not so that's that's definitely something i've uh, worked on um from being younger i think it's 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 a number of things, but I think overall, it's just a real determination of what I say matters. Mm-hmm. I think it matters. I think it matters, right? So I might get stuck, and and we've all look, we've all had, and I maybe just talk about this for a second. We've all been in horrible circumstances with with our speeches, and you you know people, especially when I when I worked in factories, you know, it it was a constant uh, attack and insults and humiliation, and I think at some point you have to decide, and I mean really decide, no, I am going to say what needs to be said regardless how my speech shows up. So, and I'm sure you've had this, right? People insert words for you. They tell you to take a minute. Um, They try and work out what you're trying to say. Regardless of what somebody did to me, I was going to finish what I goddamn wanted to say. Mm. And so that, that determination, it grew more. And... And there was a downside to this, and I'll share my downside. So my downside was I was so determined that some might say I became very assertive. Mm. Some some might say I became aggressive, which is not what I wanted to be. But I but I but I wanted to say what I needed to what I what I wanted to say. As I became as I got older and more mature and maybe a bit more sophisticated, I read more books on how to influence and persuade people. I relaxed more into myself because what I realized was, yes, you can say what you want to say, but you don't have to do, you you don't have to beat people up with it. You know, you, you actually, most people, decent people will give you the time and space to express yourself. So take the time and space, believe that they will give you that. And if you so so you know so if you believe what you what you what you're saying matters, and you believe they have the decency to listen, then actually breathe, breathe or relax or and it's not, that's not easy either, is it? But you know, you will be given the opportunity to say, to say what needs to be said. But accept also that sometimes what you say is rubbish, and you're going to get challenges on it. Just because you stutter doesn't mean you're right. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's, that should yeah. be the quote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title of this video. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes, that makes that that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. So to go back to the original question of um how do you remain the same vibe before the stutter and after the stutter? Um, could could you sum that up again? Just brief. so yeah. So I think it's belief. Mm. It's belief that what I want to say is important enough to say it, and therefore I will continue to say it until I can say it. Mm. But regardless of what happens, I am going to say it. So I need the energy to land my point. Because you see, if I beat myself up so much, I don't say what I want to say. 
then maybe I didn't believe my point in the first place. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Could you say that last part one one more time? Yeah. So if 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 I didn't stutter and I had a point, I would just say my point. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying my point because I believe it. I'm in a conversation with you. I've got a point to make, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say my point. What gets in the way is that during me making the point, I get a stutter, I get a block. Mm -hmm. So if I give up mm. at that point because my stutter has got in the way, then how much did I believe the point I was going to make? What, I, what mm. I'm now believing is my stutter is more important to listen to the pain my stutter is causing me and causing you than it is for me to make my point. Mm. Well, don't make your point then. In fact, mm. what's going to happen if that's true in your life is you're not going to say very much because mm. you might always... Mm. So do you want a life of allowing your stutter to dominate your, your belief and your ability to speak? Or do you want your ability and belief to speak to dominate your stutter. Which way yeah. around do you want it? Because you can't have it both ways. Well you, well, you can't have it both ways. You've got to choose. So to get through that, you need energy to do it. And, and belief is the energy that gets you through that. That's so powerful. That's such a good point. And there's so many things I could say about that. But I just want to emphasize, like, like yes, like in every interaction, in every time you go to speak there to kind of to kind of to kind of visualize what what you said i guess is like there is one side of to listen to the stutter and to hold back and not say what you want to say and there's the other side of to say what you want to say and this side is like fueled by your self built your self built your self belief of this is important to say Yes. And if this is valued over avoiding the stutter, then you'll say that thing yes. versus if you fear the stutter more and what you feel, what you don't have to say is worthy, yeah. then you'll hold back. Then you won't speak or right. then you'll, you'll let the stutter um, stop you from speaking. Exactly. And uh, there's, there's so, so, so many routes that I'd like to go down with that. And I, I don't think I, I have the mental space to like weave <laughs> weave between them all, um, but that is such a such a huge 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 point. Just to reinforce that, like the goal is not to learn to not stutter. The goal is to learn to value what you say enough. So that your so that your stutter and the the fear in comparison to that is nothing is right. like you have so much value you you believe your words so much you 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 think your your words matter that if you stutter or not it's like that doesn't fucking that that doesn't matter absolutely and that's the belief it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. And if it matters to somebody, they don't matter. One hundred percent. Right. If if you're in a room having a conversation and your stutter matters to them in a way, it's getting in the point that you're trying to make. They do not matter. Why do you care? And I know we all do at times. But if you fundamentally start to believe you are enough, authentic you is enough, you show up and you say what needs to be said, you stutter, so what? Make your point. Make your goddamn point. Huge. That just, that just gave me chills. Um, 
That's such that's such a good point. There's there's so much gold in that, and I just read a book re- recently on the on on a point you just made, and I can I, I would love to talk about it more, but I I want to dive into your book now because okay. I I don't know much about your book. I'm I'm guessing it's going to be around the same vibe as your TED talk, but I would just love to know more. I, love no i would love to know more about um yeah what your book is about and some or just like yeah i I would leave it at that what 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 is your book about so 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 the premise of the book the premise of the book is that there are an estimated 70 million adults around the world who have a Daughter. And medical wisdom at the moment is that you try and help somebody improve their fluency. And the premise of my book is stop. Focus on all the other bits, right? So let's get good at all the other bits, whatever your passions are. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So that's the premise of the book. The book is I want a revolution to change the way we think about ourselves, back to your authentic you point, right? Change the way you think about you. Get authentic and find out what you really want to do. The book then is divided into two parts. The first part is about me growing up. And when did I find out I had a... <laughs> um, what was it life like in primary school, and high school? And I don't know what your life was like, but mine was mixed, Right. Sometimes it was horrible and sometimes it was okay. But you know what? For kids, that's what primary school and high school is like. We just have to stutter. But <laughs> what, what, what I do is I, it, is I go through examples and, and they're all very short. They're all very short examples of just my experiences um, and then work. And work for me, starting work was horrible um, because um, in the UK, if you are from Liverpool, uh um then you are called a a a scouter. and when you live and when you work in work in bolton or the wigan area or manchester these are cities and towns in uh in the uk they don't like you if you're from liverpool Mm-hmm. So I got a lot of abuse for the fact that I was from Liverpool, even though I hadn't lived there since I was three, right? But you have that you have that brand, that sort of tag. So when they found out I was a scouser and I had a stutter, my life was just, it was just horrible on the shop floor. Mm-hmm. So I share some of the stories about what my life was like and some of the decisions, back to your point about the decisions that you, you, uh, um, uh, that you make um but because i wanted to develop myself and not be held back my back by my stutter i was reading loads and loads of books and i read a book called the four percent and the four percent gave me a little plan for how i could design my life the life i wanted so i so i described that a little bit so that's the first part of the book so the first part of the book is about my life and what i learned and then the second part of the book is a self-help book. So I've worked in 40 um, countries around the world. I've lived in India. I've lived in Hong Kong. I've lived in Dubai. Uh, So I've had a really interesting life. And I was a HR director, right? So my job was to get the best out of people, teams, business units, organizations. So what I've done is I've taken all that knowledge and all my self-help reading and gone, right, I'm going to explain a five-step process that you can use to become so much more than your... 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 So what's your desire, right, to become much more than your... First of all, what's your ambition? What is it you really want to achieve out of your life? What are you passionate about? What job do you want to do? What are you already good at? So what are your strengths? And then here are some tools and techniques that I've learned 
that will help you get what you want. Wow. So the, the second part of the book is loads of exercises that help you understand yourself and design the life you really want and then put that into put that into action. So it's th- they're the two parts of the book. What I've learned, then how I can help you from what I've learned to apply that to your own life. Wow. That, that is something I, I would say is definitely not out there in the stuttering community mm. to have such a, a book for people who stutter that doesn't focus on the stutter. Right. And I think that's exactly, exactly what people who stutter need as speech therapy and a whole bunch of different type of shit will tell you that <laughs> to work on this, to, <laughs> to work on the stutter, you, uh, or to live the life you want to live, you must learn to overcome the stutter. And I, I say overcome in the way where they say it to remove it from your life. Yeah. Yeah. And I am 100% on board, 100% on board with, with your rev, with your rev, with your revolution that you're, with your revolution that you're starting of don't, fix your stutter, fix your life, create the life you want to live. And then your stutter becomes so small. And the fact you have a five-step process of how to do, how to do that. And you being a prime, a example of that living in, was it 40 different countries? Yes. Yeah. And being an HR manager, like people who stutter think like, Oh, I, I stutter. So I, I can't do this job and I stutter. So I'll, I'll never, I'll never be able to work with people. For you to be the prime example of it, to be the author of this book, I think it's an invaluable resource for people who stutter. That, thank you. Look, I'm re- I'm really, I just, I'm really hoping um, that it's just going to help people. I, and I think, again, having a stutter, we're not always the best at going asking for help because if you ask for help, you might stutter, right? So I think it's, but if people can read stuff and I'm going to try and put some, I'm going to, I'm, so what I'm going to do is take the exercises out of the book and put them online as well. So try and make them interactive for people. Um, so they can just go on and have a play, you know, and, and maybe hold some webinars, something. I just want to make it accessible to people really. Amazing. And where would people be able to find this book and get in contact with you? and all of that yeah so um a stuttering revolution dot um com is the website and if they go to amazon um the book is already there for pre-order but remember um the 99 pence 99 cents deal will be uh on the 27th so uh you know i don't want people to have to pay sort of full price if they can get it for a if they can get it for 99 pence to 99 cents and hopefully we can help more people that way um yeah so that's the, that's the way to get in touch amazing amazing and i'll have all the links i'll have all the links to that down in the show in the show notes too so anyone who wants to buy this book and learn more about what this book is about just go down in the show notes which should be in the dis in the description and you can find all the links to this um, with that being said, Paul, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I I am inspired by the the biggest thing that my mind is caught by you. That's a terrible way to phrase it. But um, what stands out the most is a better way, probably. What stands out about you to me the most is how how yeah, I've said this before, but how you remain the same person if you stutter or not. Like this mm. this stutter, it's a clear A example that this stutter is is a micro thing to you. It's like it's just something that happens sometimes. It's that's not the reason why I'm not worthy. It's not the reason why I should, I should stay quiet. It's not the reason why I should doubt myself in the future. It's just something that happens. And it's very clear that it's just just a small thing that's like, yeah, it's just one of the 20 dartboard pieces. And I really, really love that. So 
thank you so much for coming on, Paul. And do you have any any last things that you'd want to share? So, so um, what I want to share, first of all, is thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I think the fact that you are doing what you're doing says a lot about you. You know, I mean, you have a stutter and you're brave enough and have the courage to, um, you know, to do a, a podcast. And the fact you're, you, you know, you want to share these ideas from different people to help our community is amazing. Um, so I've thoroughly enjoyed um, uh our conversation and if there's anything else i can do to help you or the community in the future please let me know and uh you know i'm up for um you know supporting you as well chase in terms of um other people i can i can ask to come up on podcast with you so yes yeah, it's, it's just been a it's been a really enjoyable um uh way to spend time so thank you Amazing. And thank you so much for sharing that. Well, we will definitely stay in touch. I would love to to stay in touch with you, Paul, as I'm sure we we can definitely do other things in the future. And once your book is released and I have read it, I would also love you back on if, right. if that's all right. I appreciate that. Nice. Awesome. Well, with that being said, thank, thank you all for listening. And again, thank thank you, Paul. All, all of Paul's links will down will be down below in the show notes to get in contact with him and to buy the book. And uh, yeah, thanks again. And yeah, thank you, Paul. Yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Take See care. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye.